All right. Well, we'll get things kicked off for our July virtual event. I want to thank everyone for joining us again as we continue our virtual uh, monthly speaker events. Uh, joining us today is Michael Cotton. He's going to be talking to us about negative SEO and what you can do to not hurt you. Uh, but before we get things kicked off, I want to make a few announcements. Obviously, we're really excited. Our next month, uh, we won't be having a virtual monthly event as we are excited to pre uh, present Engage 2021 virtually. That'll be August 5th and 6th of this year. Tickets are on sale now. Now, if you still have your ticket that you've held on to from our previously in-person event for 2020, know that your admission to this year's event will still be free as it was in 2020. Uh, be looking out for your inboxes. We will be sending out admission uh, and dial in information uh, throughout. Um, we have an exciting uh, speaker um, lineup that will be dropping onto the website within the next uh, week or so. Uh, but if you don't have a ticket, we're just offering those for $99 for everyone who can pre-purchase those. Uh, that'll be a two-day event, uh, again, with speakers for SEO, paid search, paid social. We have a wide gamut of speakers. We're really excited about that. So again, go to scmpdx.org slash engage for information and tickets uh, that are available for that. Uh, as always, we're proud to uh, to raise awareness around our charity of choice. Uh, that is Elevate Oregon. Elevate Oregon is centered around elevating students throughout the Oregon public school community, providing uh, job counseling and career opportunities uh, for those um, that they're looking to do. If you want more information around Elevate Oregon, go to elevateoregon.org. Uh, and of course, uh, after Engage 2021, we'll be offering um, an additional series of virtual events uh, throughout 2021 as we constantly reevaluate and make sure that we might be have a choice to a chance to see everyone in person once again in 2022. If you heard that earlier on in this call, uh, stay tuned for announcements around that through our newsletter. Be sure to sign up on that at scmpdx.org uh, to stay abreast of all the information upcoming announcements we're going to have for the rest of the year. But without any further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Michael, who joins us today. Uh, Michael has been doing uh, SEO consultancy since 2009, and today he's joining us for his presentation on negative SEO. Michael, without any further ado, I'm going to hand it off to you and take it away. If you have questions throughout the series, drop them into the chat. We'll be having a live Q&A session following Michael's presentation, so you can get all your questions answered around all your specific needs. Michael, the floor is yours. All righty. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. And let me get my screen share going here. Is that working for you? Looking good. Okay. Yep. So let's see. The, what we're going to talk about today is negative SEO. Um, what you what you can see, what you think you can see, um, or what you can't see, and how it can get you into some trouble. So let's uh, roll forward here to the agenda. Today's topics. First of all, we're talking about you know why does this why is this even a thing? What you know what what's the point of it, and what are people trying to do? So what's it supposed to do to your competitor? What Google says about negative SEO and whether it's a thing or not. What actually happens, which is a little bit different. Um, some common tactics that the negative SEO uh, big players seem to be using lately. And we're gonna look at some, some principles for um, doing analysis of backlinks and, and how you decide what to disavow and what not to disavow. Michael, so I just wanted all, to, to note really fast, we can see your presenter slides if that's just wanted to give you the heads up on that. I'm showing the wrong screen then. Let me, let me switch that over. How's that? There we go. That's perfect. How's that? All righty. Okay. So first of all, um, why did negative SEO start? What was the, what was the goal here? What we're trying to accomplish? Well, as we all know, doing real marketing is hard and good link building is not only hard, but tends to be pretty expensive. And it's unbelievably cheaper and easier to try negative SEO to push a few competitors down. And I won't tell you what this website is, but have a look at the right column here. For, for less than the price of a DA40 or DA30 link, you can build 1.5 million negative backlinks to your competitor, plus 10 really bad ones. And I'll, on this list, the 10 really bad ones are probably um, far more impactful than the 1.5 million of the others. So what is negative SEO supposed to do? Well, in the olden days, um, the, the idea was you get your competitor penalized by Google. So either you push them down to page seven, page 10, something like that, or you get them DXed entirely. Now, what does Google say about it? 
So this is what John Mueller actually said, I think maybe two years ago. He says, you know, in general, we automatically try to take these kinds of negative uh, spammy and negative SEO backlinks into account and ignore them when we see them happening. Um, I think try is probably the important word here. Uh, and for the most part, and this is still his quote, not me, for the most part, uh, John says he suspects that works fairly well. He doesn't see many people with actual issues around that, that being negative SEO. So he thinks it's mostly working pretty well. I, I think that none of this is a lie, really. Despite my Pinocchio graphic, this is not really a lie. It mostly works fairly well. Uh, the problem happens uh, when you get, sort of get into the numbers, and it varies a lot uh, from one site to the next. So what actually happens? So these days, actually seeing a site penalized from negative SEO is pretty rare. Uh, Google probably does ignore the vast majority of these um, links. They're probably picking them up eventually. Um, the thing is, is these, uh, these negative SEO domains pop up, new domains pop up every week um, and hundreds of them every week. And so there's a question, of course, of how long is it between when the negative SEO person launches another thousand really bad uh, domains and puts links on them to whoever his targets are um, and when Google starts to recognize it and stops counting it against you. Now, um, there's a lot of stuff. If you've looked at the exported backlinks from Google Search Console, you'll probably see some stuff in there that's obviously stuff that Google should be spotting by now because it's been out there forever. Um, so uh, scraper sites, there's a giant coupon um, a link farm uh, out there. Uh, there's a bunch of malware kinds of stuff. Um, and they're still showing up in Search Console's link export. And if Google, you might think, if Google's really all that good at spotting this, wouldn't they just not show it and not even store it in their database? You know, I've got a lot of clients for whom the, the spam and negative SEO links might be 80 or 90% of their links. And so if maybe 50% or 30% of all the backlinks out there in the universe are ones Google is ignoring, they could save a lot of data costs if they just didn't report on them. However, my guess, Google has always been unbelievably paranoid about whether, about anything, any information to black hats to give them clues about what works and what doesn't work. My guess is that a lot of the stuff that's getting reported in Search Console's uh, link export is being ignored, but it's being reported there so that the folks doing the negative SEO attacks can't figure out what's working and what's being ignored. Because if I'm a negative SEO guy and I and that's my entire business, I'm going to build a couple of sites and I'm going to um, try running my own attacks against my sites and then look at the, the link profile and search console and go, okay, well, I guess I won't use that tactic anymore because Google's you know spotting that. So they're probably still reporting those in Search Console, just so that the negative SEO folks can't tell what's actually working. So let's say Google ignores 90% of the, of the nasty links, or 95%. I'll well, do 90 because I do the math on that. If somebody bought that 1.5 million nasty link package and 90% are being ignored, there's still 150,000 really nasty links to your site. And if you're you know, if you're selling the e-commerce site and you've got 10,000 links to your site that are good and 150,000 that are bad that Google is still counting against you, that's going to that's going to be a problem. It's going to look to Google like um, like you, almost nothing you've done is real. Most of the stuff out there, either you're buying links or, or whatever else. Um, Last bullet point here, I think is pretty important. The one place I've actually seen penalties still happening the last few months is for particular anchor text. So I've seen negative SEO attackers basically um, go after one of my clients with one or two or three uh, specific anchor texts and they'll build millions of backlinks with that anchor text to their pages. And, and one of the clients I saw that happen to, there were only something like a hundred links with that anchor text. And that dropped them out of the first 10 pages. So here's what it looks like um, if negative SEO is working against you. So this is a client of mine. And if you look back here to April, things are nice and steady. Now, some of you will go, ha, huh, June update here, right? But that's not really the whole story. Yeah, they, they got hit a bit by that. Going from about the 1st of May up to the June update, Every, every week, they're down a little bit more. And even after the June update, they're continuing to drop down. And I just did a disavow for them 
I don't know, two or three days ago. Um, so they should start picking up pretty soon here. But this is what you're going to see. Whereas if you've got a Google manual penalty or even a Google algorithmic penalty, what you'd see is one day or maybe two days where you fall off a cliff. That's not what you tend to see with negative SEO. You tend to see the slow drop off. So what's happening? Why does it happen like that? And why does it not drop off a cliff? So as the backlink mix that Google sees for your site turns more and more towards weak and questionable stuff, I think what's happening is Google's overall trust in your site is evaporating. The idea being, you know, if Google's looking at your site and if you've clearly bought a whole bunch of weak spammy links, so these are the links that are getting through from, you know, super weak link farms, um, you know, farms of directory sites and, or whatever it happens to be, um, and they look like bought spam links. If Google sees that and says, geez, you've got a big percentage of your backlink profile, looks like it was paid for it and sweet crap, then maybe some of the ones that look legit were bought as well. So that's what I think that they're thinking. And I think in terms of how the math fits into rankings, my bet is it's something to do with expertise, authority, and trust scores. And the reason why I'm thinking that is think about it this way. If, if let's say, um, let's say your, let's say your site is a, you're an SEO consultant and your, your links that give you authority, so links to my site come from SEMPDX, Moz, Raven Tools, uh, Acton, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Q3 Digital, all these kinds of sites. So all these sites that are in my space that are strong and legit. If Google wants to see whether I'm trying to rank high for SEO consultant just by buying cheap links from directories, those directory sites are not going to be related to the business I'm in and the terms I'm trying to rank for. Um, and so my guess is that, that what might be happening is it might have nothing to do with penalties at all. And it's more to do with, you know, we don't think you're a very good SEO consultant because most of your links have nothing to do with SEO, that sort of stuff. So what Google's looking at is, you know, who do you, who do you your website, hang out with? If all your friends are spammers and dirtbags, mm, chances are you probably are too. So this is the you know, hanging out in the bad neighborhood kind of problem. So let's talk about some common tactics these negative SEO folks are using. The first one that you'll see is cloaking for Googlebot. Um, and so what that means is these uh, spammy pages, sites, link farms, etc., are checking to see what's browsing it. Is it a, you know, is it Chrome, Firefox, Screaming Frog, Ahrefs, you know, uh, Roger Mosbot, et cetera, or Googlebot. And if it's Googlebot, they show the page with, with the toxic link on it. Anybody else that, that hits that page either sees a 404, you see 500, you see 403 not authorized. Uh, you might see an empty page. You might see the entire site just down and not respond at all. So tools like monitor backlinks um, or you're looking at Ahrefs or Majestic or SEMrush, they don't even see these links because they never see the content on the page that has the link to you when they, trawl, when they try to crawl that page. The tools that do see the links, so for instance, if you export all your backlinks from Search Console and you throw them into a tool like Kerboo Link Risk, what Kerboo Link Risk does when they crawl that page, they go, oh, that page is dead. That link must be gone, you know, or, or for some of these, they'll return empty pages or a 404 page. So there's no link on the page. And so your link tool says, OK, that's no longer a problem because that link is gone. It's only gone if you're not Googlebot. So uh, next tactic, uh, toxicity. So the kinds of things that we see that these negative SEO folks are doing um, to try to uh, get a site uh, penalized um, or at least seen as very, very toxic, um, so that then when they put a link from that site and hundreds like it to the target site, um, it, you know, it looks really bad. They're, they're deliberately trying to get these sites penalized or flagged as, as severely toxic malware, et cetera. Um, one of the things you'll see often is that the site uh, will do a redirection to a malware site or actually have malware on it itself. And so you'll get, in Chrome, you'll get the big red screen it says warning deceptive site ahead and all that sort of stuff. Um, keep in mind that the negative SEO folks are not trying to be tricky towards Googlebot. 
They're only trying to be tricky towards those of us who are trying to spot the toxic links. So they're building these, these giant obvious link farms out there, all on the same IP address, all with the exact same um, uh, footprint in terms of style sheets and JS and layout and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that Google can spot it as a link farm and goes, okay, well, we don't really want to count that. Um, I'll show you an example a little bit later of some obvious computer generated text. So Google has said somewhere in you know, the webmaster um, forums or group or whatever, Google has said that um, you shouldn't use any sort of even Google translated text. Um, Google doesn't like that. And they don't consider that real content if you use Google Translate to generate your new page. So they have a lot of, um, a lot of logic in there that can spot whether something was computer generated or handwritten. And the example I'll show you, it's, it's not even trying hard. And, and that's because these negative SEO folks, they're not trying to make it look legit. They're trying to make it not look legit. Another trick you'll see is uh, you'll, you'll hit a page and it'll launch 10, 20, 50 new browser windows. Um, I used to see porn sites used for negative SEO. So they would, you know, they try to show that all of a sudden your site had 100,000 links from all these porn sites, but I haven't seen that for a while. Last time I saw that was probably three years ago. And it was, it was 40,000 subdomains um, of Russian sites, all with sex terms in the domain names and the links. And then the, the pages were just genera uh, computer generated um, uh, sex terms and images. But I actually haven't seen that for a couple of years. So another common tactic redirect to goodness. Now, what's happening here is the, the toxic page really is a toxic page. And if you actually looked at that toxic page and the, the uh, flags and signals from things like a Moz Pro toolbar, you'd see it was bad and you want to disavow it. But what these pages do is for anything but Googlebot, they do an instant redirection to something healthy. So that you go, oh, that's not bad. You know, you the human analyst, that's not bad. I'm not going to disavow that. That's a uh, and I'll show you some examples. Um, they're, they're redirected as a legit site, so you, the human, don't disavow it. The other thing that I've seen them do is they'll actually uh, make little JavaScript calls to purge your browser history so that even in the Moz toolbar where you go to see all the chain of redirects that got you to the page, those are gone. So they're cleaning that out. Uh, these are the common destinations I've seen a lot. Uh, Agoda is an online travel uh, agency. I think it's might be used heavily in Europe or India. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't seen that happen now for three or four months. Um, I see a lot of redirections to a plain Google page, but it's not the same Google homepage. It's at google.com, but for some reason it, it just, it looks super simplified with none of the, you know, daily Google fancy logo and things like that. Um, I see a lot of redirections to image bookmarking sites. And sometimes I'll, I'll even see chains of redirections between those. Another common tactic, and I saw this happen on a client side a couple of months ago, is over-optimized anchor text, where they're actually trying to get the links counted, but they're super weak, and there's, there's hundreds and hundreds, usually, with the exact same anchor text. Uh, the way you spot this, um, if you're using Kerbu Link Risk, um, it's an, so the Link Risk is an expensive tool. I think my license is about 3,000 a year, but so far from what I've seen, it blows the doors off everything else. Uh, in terms of um, doing your, your basic analysis. They've got an anchor text summary report. And a lot of times you can spot problems really fast just by going to that. Because what you'll see is you'll see one anchor text, which doesn't read very naturally. It's not likely to have actually been used by lots of humans. Um, you know, like click here for the best blue widget or something like that. And you'll see a count of 75 links with that anchor text. So that's a great way to, to uh, detect where some of this might be happening. You save yourself a lot of time by going there first rather than manually going through all the, the links that get flagged as bad or the links that are inactive. Uh, the other thing about uh, the anchor text summary report in Kerbu Link Rest is it helps you spot your own uh, or, or your own mistakes with excessive article, negative article or uh, article marketing where you publish one article and it gets republished on a whole bunch of other sites. Um, but that's also been used uh, for negative SEO. And so it'll help you spot that. And sometimes this, the article marketing is accidental or self-inflicted. Either 
you signed up for some article marketing deliberately because you thought it was a good thing or your client thought it was a good thing. Uh, sometimes what will happen is you'll get published on a legit site. And I've seen this a lot with TechCrunch and a whole bunch of um, super spammy, weak, fake news sites will pick up and rerun the exact same publication. I don't know why. Maybe they're just scraping content just to build up their own content to look bigger or maybe they're scraping a lot of content to be seen as a scraper site. I'm not sure. Uh, but you'll have a legit article at some place like TechCrunch, especially, and then you'll see 40, 50, 50, 100, 200 copies of that on all you know com sites that are complete garbage, clearly complete garbage. So starts a legit article, legit news site, and gets picked up and republished by the unwashed masses. So now let's talk about um, um, how to do the analysis and what sort of principles to follow when you're deciding whether or not to disavow something. So first off, if Google doesn't care, we don't care. So I have clients come to me all the time and says, oh, do you want my export from SEMrush or my export from Ahrefs and all this? Don't really care. If Google isn't looking at it, um, then, then we don't care because it can't hurt you. Now, Google doesn't report every link from every site in Search Console, but they do a pretty thorough job as far as I can tell at um, including at least one or two links from uh, each site that links to you. So there may be some that fall through the cracks, but not very many, I don't think. Now, if a link raises a red flag in one of our tools, and I use multiple tools when I'm trying to decide disavow. So I'll use Kerbu Link Risk, and we'll see what uh, Kerbu thinks in terms of a toxicity score. And then I'll also use um, the Moz Pro toolbar and the spam um, signal there, and sometimes even drill down into the linking domains and look and see what they really are. If either of those raise a red flag and the sites like Domain Authority 2 or 3 or something like that, it's got no link juice to send to our site anyways. So there's no upside to keeping it. And the downside is if Google also thinks it's spam, it's going to hurt you. So if it's not sending link juice anyways, just disavow it. Use multiple tools. Uh, because the, the kinds of uh, flags and signals that one tool is looking at um, is going to overlap a lot with what another tool looks at, uh, but they've all got different stuff. So I've seen sites where Kuru Linkris thinks that it's like 900 plus out of 1,000 for toxicity, and Moz gives it 2% or 3%. I've seen it the other way around, where Kuru thinks it's a good link, and Moz gives it 67% spam score. Um, so um, use more than one tool. To, to have a look at links um, uh, for disavowing them. Now, the next thing to think about is, you know, is all this bad stuff you see in your backlink pro profile negative SEO? Um, mostly it's not. Mostly what you're gonna find is a whole pile of scraper sites. So there's people out there who are desperately trying to make money on banner ads or um, just grow traffic so that they can sell a site or whatever it happens to be. Um, and so they're scraping content from all over the place. Now. Do we need to know if it's negative SEO or not? We don't. All we need to know is, does it look like spam or crap to Google? If it does, we don't care what the intent was, whether the intent was to hurt us or whether the intent was, you know, just to create a, uh, you know, a spammy scraper site and maybe make money for a month before you ditch the whole thing. We don't care. If it, if it has um, some red flags, not much link juice, disavow it. So you don't need to look at every link. Um, that, well, if you're paid by the hour and you look at every link, you'll, you'll, you'll raise your average invoice a lot, and that's fabulous. Not so good for, the, for your client, though. So first thing to do is throw all those links into Excel. So I'll, I'll export from Google Search Console as a CSV. I'll load that to, into Excel. Then Search Console is reporting the HTTP links different from the HTTPS. And so if you go and sort that in Excel, you're going to do twice as much work. So do a global replace in Excel uh, from HTTP to HTTPS and then do a global replace from the dub, dub, dub to non dub, 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 because uh, it's unfortunate in this day and age, there's still uh, zillions of sites out there, including big ones like Yellow Pages and people like that, um, that um, don't automatically 301 redirect to a canonical subdomain. Uh, after you've done that, that replace, then sort by the domain and you wanna keep just one link per domain. Um, the exception would be, you know, if you're seeing a domain with an awful lot of links back to your site, um, you probably want to write that down and pay a little bit more attention to that one. Uh, because if it is toxic, you have a lot of links from it to your site, um, you want to pay more attention. It's, it's a bigger mistake to make than if you had 
really just one link from a toxic domain and you, you made the call and, and decided to keep it, you're only keeping one bad link. If you've got links from, you know, a thousand, a thousand links from a domain and you make the call to keep it and it turns out Google wasn't liking it, thinks it's spam, that's a bigger problem. So, but mostly you want to sort by domain, keep one link per domain. Um, if you're using something like Kerbu Link Risk, you have link credits uh, for analysis. And you know, if you if you download you know eighty thousand backlinks from Search Console for a, a client site or your own site, um, and then you're running link, link analysis on all eighty thousand links, um, I don't need to see what Kerbu Link Risk thinks of Pinterest or Yahoo News or Yahoo Finance. So when you do that sorting, chop those things out. Don't waste your time in running the report and don't waste your link credits letting it analyze those kinds of links. So let's talk about patterns to watch for. As you're looking at the links, what are some of the really, really common patterns that are out there um, that you wanna spot? So the first one, and this one's been out there probably for five plus years. It's a bunch of, I think, Chinese uh, sites. Um, uh, the, the initial set of domains they had um, mostly started with H or J. Now, sometimes they'll have words, but the key you're looking for, is it'll be multiple words, first letter, uppercase, separated by hyphens. Uh, and I'll show you an example what it looks at in a second. Uh, it looks like in a second, but usually the domain name is some jumbled bunch of letters, six or eight letters, something like that. In the past three or four months, I've seen them start to use real words in the domain name, and it's clearly the same link farm. This one is actually the same link farm. It'll have slash listing. It'll have whatever the business name is. It's, it's pretending to be a directory is what it is. Um, and then at the end, it'll have this um, uh, like identifier tagged on, mostly numbers identifier. Uh, sometimes it'll be, you know, a meaningless um, set of characters in the domain name. Sometimes it'll look like some real words, like it might be a real site, but look for this pattern. Don't disavow it if you see this pattern, but click in and have a look. What you'll find with um, this link farm is 95% of the links that you see in Search Console when you actually go to them from these link farms, come back with a completely dead site. But that other 5% will come back live. And I think what's happening is they're making these sites go live for a couple of weeks just so that Google crawls them and then they're absolutely and 100% shutting them down. Um, and, and the reason um, they are trying this technique is what you'll see, and you probably see this in 404 errors in Search Console, is you can, um, you can have a 404 error show up in Search Console and that will keep showing up for something like six months before Google finally gives up on it. So the theory the negative SEO folks are going after here is they show you the link once, they can make it 404 once Googlebot has seen the link and Google will treat the site like that link is still in existence for maybe six months, even though they've shut the site down. Uh, there's a, another enormous link farm, probably seen several hundred, maybe a thousand domains in this link farm. Most of them, end in, but not all, end in .info. And then there's a slug in the URL. And the slug is either images, pics, photos, collections, references, or galleries. There's probably a couple I'm, I'm forgetting. Um, generally, this one, um, uh, when you click on it, if it's not dead, it's going to redirect to malware. So just a, a FYI, don't ever do backlink analysis, especially if you expect negative SEO with no antivirus on your computer. It'll be a very, very sad ending for you. Um, here's a bunch of TLDs that are nearly always uh, negative SEO, especially GA, GQ, and CF. I actually saw a real site with .xyz as the TLD yesterday, but it's really rare. And there's some real ones with ML and TK, but um, anytime you see those, definitely drill in and see what's going on there because most of them are going to be either scrapers or negative SEO. Uh, another pattern I've seen just start pop up maybe the last two months is, is subdomains. And so they'll take either the common freebie sites like Weebly and Wix and WebNode and things like that. Um, or the, there's a whole bunch I've actually, uh, of um, root domains that I'd never heard of before. And what you'll see is in one month, there'll be dozens and dozens and dozens that all have the same subdomain portion with different root domains. Watch out for links with URL extensions of PHP 5. I also saw a PHP 3 yesterday or shtml, um, 
often those things are um, executing redirects or trying to install malware or they'll pop up a zillion windows, things like that. Also, don't trust PDFs. So um, uh, when you, when you uh, see a PDF in Karoo Linkris, I'll generally copy that whole link out and I'll throw that into Moz Link Explorer and look at the subdomain and see what the links look like to the subdomain before I decide whether or not to keep it. Uh, it used to be PDFs seemed to be pretty safe. Nobody was using them, but I'd say in the past six months, the negative SEO folks have started um, putting PDFs on very toxic domains. Um, I think they think that you won't take the time to actually drill into the PDF and download it. All right, this is an example of the computer generated um, pages that I was talking about earlier. This is on Blogspot. These started happening maybe two months ago and it's just gibberish text. They all have the exact same kind of pinky brown background um, and the same headings and the, and the exact same format. It's just different words stuffed in there. And what I've seen happen when people under attack is they'll get a few dozen of these usually show up in the backlink profile. And you know this kind of text, if you read this, this is gonna be easy for Google to, to spot those, it's not legit. This is the coupon link farm I talked about a little while ago. Uh, a lot of the domains in this link farm have the word coupon in the domain name, but this one is like um, bestappsnow.com or something like that. They, they all look exactly the same. They all have the exact same um, header up here, the exact same header here, the same colors. It's always black up here with a light gray menu and a search bar. And then they uh, usually there's an ad down here someplace. This one just started showing up in the past six months. Um, sometimes it'll redirect to newsnation.org, uh, but sometimes it just stays on its own domain name. The format's always exactly the same. It's this very plain uh, font up top, and they've just generated a whole bunch of uh, pages out of um, the uh, content they've scraped. And one other thing I've noticed is typically there's a, there's a bunch of broken images on it too. Um, sometimes these ones will sit on this page for you know 30 seconds and then start a redirect chain to malware. And usually the domain names will have news in the domain name. So here's a little uh, nerd trick. So remember when I talked about um, uh, exporting all the links uh, from Search Console, pulling them up in a cell and then bring it down to one, um, one dom uh, subdomain, uh, one link per subdomain. This is a bunch of little Excel functions and um, I'll send this, this list off to, with the PowerPoint SMPDX. So if anybody wants to copy these, this allows you to, to basically extract the subdomain and stick in column G. And then in Excel, you can do data, remove duplicates, uncheck everything and just remove, you know, just keep one instance of each value in column G and that'll save you a pile of time. All right, so uh, time for the what if. So what if, uh, a backlink looks legit and is legit. You know, people will come to me and say, no, but that's our that's our WordPress blog. But your WordPress blog has zero links to it. It looks like a spam blog to Google. Or, you know, what if it's a, you know, a legitimate uh, another website of yours and that website has has no links to it, but it has 100,000 links back to your main website. Um, that sort of stuff. We actually don't care if a website is guilty of being a spammer or negative SEO or scraper or whatever, all we care about is, is it gonna look that way to Google? And is it gonna affect our rankings because Google thinks it's spam? So this includes your own Blogspot, Weebly and WordPress blogs. You wanna get rid of those if they're, well, not necessarily always, if they're zero link kinds of blogs. What do we do if the domain actually looks good? Look at like subdomains of Quora, Medium, Tumblr, things like that. I've seen a lot of uh, recent negative SEO where people are building lots and lots and lots of subdomains at Quora and at Medium, all with zero links to them. Um, keep in mind, um, Google mostly still treats subdomains as if they're completely different websites. So you might look at, look at that and go, oh, I, won't, I don't want to disavow something from Medium or from Quora. Well, you wouldn't disavow, you know, www.medium.com, but you might disavow, you know, you know, Joe's hinky widgets dot medium.com or whatever it was. Um, also look at 
uh, staging versions of websites. It, it seems to me that one of the negative SEO attackers, maybe back in October, November, discovered they could quickly identify people who had staging versions of their websites with default logins, because who cares about protecting it? It's not the live site. Um, and so it looks like um, the negative SEO attackers have been able to hack into a whole bunch of staging versions of sites which aren't real and the, and, the, and the real businesses behind them probably don't even know they're out there or don't know that the content's been compromised on them. And so watch for those. Just because the, the main domain looks legit and is legit doesn't mean that the, the staging version is. And if the staging version is legit, typically a staging site's gonna have no links to it. Disavow that staging subdomain. It's not sending you link juice anyway. All right, time for Q&A. But first, let's get one thing out of the way. Don't ask me what the site is that sells 1.5 million toxic links for only $250. I'm not telling you. All right. Um, question. Let me pop up chat here. Yeah, we just have one to start off. And it says, what percent of business websites do you suspect are successfully compromised by negative SEO attacks, like the ones in your presentation, how prevalent are these negative SEO attacks uh, among your clientele? So um, I, I think those are two different percentages. I would say that 80, 90% of my clients have links to them from the scraper sites that everybody else has links from. And you might go, well, if everybody else has links, then I don't really need to take care of those links. If everybody else is getting linked to by prlog.ru or whatever, um, but the thing is, there's a whole bunch of people out there who are cleaning those out. And now if you know, the people who've cleaned those out are going to look better to Google than the ones who have it. Um, so I would say nearly everybody's got a whole bunch of toxic links that you ought to clean out. Uh, in terms of the ones that are actually under an attack, I would guess that it's in the range of 5 or 10%. And in terms of the number that are under attack and it's actually having an impact, it's maybe half of that. One of the things is the bigger the site is, the more crap links you have to point at it to change the shape of that bell curve of your, your really weak, horrible links versus your good links. If you're Amazon.com, Amazon I don't think these negative SEO guys could do anything to hurt Amazon because they simply can't create as many horrible backlinks or, or even close to the same order of magnitude as the good ones Amazon has. So um, some of my big clients who have, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of backlinks from legit sites, they get, you know, uh, 100,000 spammy links pointed at them, of which Google ignores 90,000. So they have 10,000 spammy links against their 100,000 good links. Might not move the needle at all. Google might not care. Google might be seeing that, but it's not enough to tip the balance, you know, to meet that threshold. Uh, another question from our own Anna Madil. Uh, do you have a good solid running list of the tools that you're using at the moment or ones that mentioned in your presentation? Yeah, so um, Karoo Link Risk, um, those folks are, they're out of England. So I think it's about, I think I pay 700 something a quarter for my license there. And that's enough for me to, to run it against an awful lot of client sites. So Karoo, Karoo Link Risk is kind of my foundational tool. Then I'd say um, the Moz Pro um, Toolbar and Link Explorer. So when I look at something in Link Risk that gets flagged for whatever reason, either it's flagged or it's showing as a dead link in Link Risk. So inactive or no followed. So that's another trick. Some of these sites will no follow a link thinking you'll just ignore it. Um, but if you get too many no follow links with um, keyword anchor text, that looks like blog comment spam. And so that will hurt you. So anyway, start in link risk. You decide to pop up that, that uh, link in a new browser window and have a look at it. Do that with your Moz Pro toolbar on and have a look at the spam score and the links to the subdomain there. Um, and then if you're still questioning, then click on the link in the Moz Pro toolbar to pop open Moz Link Explorer and click on the linking domains look at the followed links to it and just see what it looks like. Sometimes Moz will give sites an okay spam score of like 5% or 10%. But when you drill into it, you see a collection of domains that are all, you know, keyword suggestion tool sites, or they're all at doubt XYZ, or, you know, it's got 
20 links and 18 of them are for Blogspot or something like that. So um, Kerberu Link Risk, Moz Pro Toolbar, Moz Link Explorer, Excel, obviously, for doing all your sorting and that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, in terms of the data source, uh, Google Search Console. Uh, the next question we have here, how do you measure success going through the disavow link process, uh, direct action, traffic? Uh, how do you measure that success? Okay, so domain authority is not going to be affected because Moz doesn't see your disavow file. Um, so uh, you can't really look at the Moz domain authority or the Moz spam score after the disavow because the only thing that saw the disavow is um, Google Search Console. Well, and link risk. You can... Uh, you can feed your disavow file back into Kerbu Link Risk, and that's actually pretty helpful. If so, let's say you're going through a backlink profile and you spot a pattern uh, that puts out 100, 500 um, domains that you want to disavow, add those to the disavow file, and then you can re import the disavow file into the Link Risk project, and that might save you, you know, looking at 30% of the links. So, um, in terms of measuring whether it worked or not, typically what I'll see is if the if the site was really being negatively affected in rankings, after you do the disavow, it's a couple days. It's that fast. Um, so um, you wanna look in search consoles, um, performance report, and you're looking at overall traffic from search. And then you're also looking at, especially if it was an uh, anchor text over optimization problem, you're looking at um, your rankings for that one exact keyword. Thank you. Next question, after going through and disavowing spammy links, do you think there's any value uh, in ruminating on the intent of a site like, um, and it's the hnjymm.cn. Uh, is there, I think I uh, just found in my clients, thanks for the great session. So uh, any, any thoughts about the reasons why they just kind of go after, or are they just trying to go after everyone online the best way they can? Um, so there's entertainment value, right? <laughs> to see what these folks are up and, and, and it's intellectually interesting. If you drill in, it's it's useful to drill in and sort of get a sense for, hey, if I if I just went disavowed a thousand domains, what were those? Were, were those all scraper sites that linked to everybody and a few random things? Or is somebody actually got the, their gun site on my site? And, and paying to try to sink me. Um, and, the, and the reason why you might care is the, how often you want to come back and review latest backlinks again. So you can export, if you use the export latest backlinks in Search Console, it'll put the date Google discovered it in that uh, CSV file. Keep in mind that that's sometimes three weeks out of date. So for instance, um, if the last time you downloaded the, the backlinks of Search Console was May 1st. Um, you probably won't see any dates in that file later than April 15th. Um, and if you go back like today in July and you uh, download the latest links and you look at the ones from April, you'll see a whole bunch of new ones from early April before the 15th that was showing up in that file that weren't there before. So always go back up and do a month overlap. Um, so um, going back to the question, um, you, you want to figure out, you know, what's what's going on? Am I under attack or is this just crap accumulating uh, from scraper sites or like I talked about the TechCrunch articles getting all of a sudden republished all over the place, that sort of thing. Uh, if you know you're under attack, then you want to ratchet up the time or ratchet down the time in between reviews. Um, and so the next question that comes out of that, of course, is, well, how long should it be between reviews if you're under negative SEO attack? Uh, I will typically do a month unless it seems like a really heavy attack. So, so here's what you want to look at. Let's say a site has uh, a thousand domains linking and your first pass through, you disavow 300 domains out of those thousand. And then you do another uh, backlinks review a month later. And this time around, you disavow another 400 domains. You don't wanna let that go three months because then you'd have 1200 spammy domains against your 300 good domains. If on the other hand, a month later, you, you do your disavow and you add 30 domains to it. Okay, that's, that's, that's pretty small. Now you're looking at 10%. So you're probably okay stretching that to two months um, uh, and, and going from there. What'll typically happen 
is um, the, the competitor is going to contract with a negative SEO person to do a batch. So like, here's my check, go build your 1.5 million crap links and get back to me. They'll do that. Um, some time will usually go by because the victim doesn't know they've been hit. The victim figures it out. You do the disavow and the competitor notices that, hmm, you did get pushed down to page two for a while and now you're back up about where you were at number four on page one and you're ahead of them again. They might go back and spend more money because it worked the first time or they might just bail. What will typically happen is you see a bunch of cycles of this, right? They spent the money and it worked and it's only 250 bucks and a month or two later, um, the competitor recovers and well, do I buy one more link for myself for 250 bucks or do I buy another 1.5 million toxic links? No, they'll do that again and again. And if you're on it, what will happen is they will have dropped that first time because the, the website uh, webmaster didn't know you're under attack. After that, if you're keeping after those backlinks on a regular enough basis, there won't be a big enough percentage to actually move the needle and change your rankings. And so that person will be thinking, gee, the last three times I sent $200 to the negative SEO clown, nothing happened. I'm done. I'm wasting my money now. And so that, that's the sort of pattern you're looking at. All right. Well, that looks to be the end of our question list. Michael, thank you cool. so much for giving us your time today. Thanks, everybody. Good to see and you all. Thank you for joining our July monthly event. Uh, we're excited to continue to provide these throughout the rest of 2021. And of course, next month will be Virtual Engage 2021. Go to sempdx.org slash engage for all the information and tickets on that. Uh, be out looking for your inbox for uh, invites and event information around Engage 2021. And of course, as always, be sure to check out our charity of choice, Elevate Oregon. That's at elevateoregon.org. Thank you again and be on the lookout for more information for events throughout the rest of the year. Have a great day, everyone.